And the Bank of England raised the base rate yet again to 5%. This is the highest rate we've seen for 15 years, and I think there's still yet more rises to come as we continue to wrestle with soaring inflation. The worst inflation in the G7 the UK has right now. Mind-blowing. The biggest area these rate rises affect for most people are mortgages. And as a qualified mortgage advisor within my financial advice qualifications, I want to tell you about 10 different ways you can save on your mortgage costs to try and counteract these problems. We're going to look at ways in which you can get your monthly payments lower if cash flow is your biggest problem right now. And we are going to look at ways in which you can reduce the overall interest you pay over the life of your mortgage too. Just remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. Overpay now before your rate gets worse. If you are still on a fixed rate deal, so haven't felt the pain of these new rises yet, chances are you're still on a low rate, maybe 1 or 2% in some cases. This could be a big opportunity for you to overpay and make this low interest rate work harder for you. I did a video a while back on overpaying and paying off a mortgage early. Blimey, two years ago now that was. Look how youthful and well-groomed I look. I've still got that jumper, but it's shrunk a bit. <laughs> Link in the description for that one. But in short, whilst your rate is lower, more of the money you throw at the mortgage goes towards paying down the capital, the amount you owe. Once you inevitably move to a new higher interest rate, it won't be as effective as more of your money is going towards interest. So it's worth thinking about. Also, there could be an added bonus here. If you can get the amount you owe down so you fall into a lower loan-to-value bracket, this might help you too when it comes to securing a new deal. Say, for example, your house is worth £250,000 and your mortgage currently is £225,000, or, in other words, 90% loan-to-value. Your mortgage is 90% of the value of your home. If you paid off a chunk, say 12,500, and were able to say bring that loan value down to 85%, or 212,500 in this example, you might have access to better deals, as the lower the loan to value you have, the lower risk you are to your lender, and the better deal they'll likely give you when it comes to remortgaging time. Be careful on overpaying though. Most deals will only let you overpay 10% per year before penalising you, so check the terms of your deal first. Have a look at your original mortgage offer letter, it will be in there, or get in touch with your lender if you're not sure. And also, it's worth saying, don't overstretch yourself here. It's important to keep a cash emergency fund at all times, so don't throw everything you've got at this strategy. The money is not easy to get back if things change. Getting your house revalued if you think it's worth more. Maybe you've extended, put a new kitchen on like I did and documented in this video series here. Again, link in the description if you wanted to see how much that lot cost me. Spoiler alert, it's more than I thought. <laughs> but if for whatever reason you feel your house might be worth more than when you last arranged your mortgage deal, it might be worth getting it revalued. It all comes back to that loan-to-value point we made previously. If your house is now worth more, your mortgage will represent a smaller percentage of the value. In other words, you'll be lowering your loan-to-value again and might improve the deals you have access to. Back to our previous example, if we didn't overpay and still have our 225,000 mortgage on our 250,000 home, but it turns out that our house is actually worth more like 265,000 for whatever reason, You'll now sit within that lower 85% loan-to-value bracket and achieve the same objective without throwing any more of your money at it. Now, you'll have to convince your lender on the new value. They may send someone to look at it to check they agree, so you can't pretend it's worth something it's not. It's best to get two or three local agent opinions first before you try and go down this route. Extend your mortgage term. Most people, when they take out a mortgage, go for a 25-year term, but longer terms are available – 30, 35 years, even 40 years in some cases. If you extend the term, your monthly payments will come down as you're spreading the debt over a longer period of time. However, be careful here. Not only will this mean you'll have the mortgage for longer – perhaps meaning retirement plans get pushed back as a result – you'll pay much more in interest over the life of the mortgage too – could be tens of thousands of pounds. So. This is perhaps only worth thinking about if you've considered other options. 
you need to improve your cash flow now and have a plan for how you might catch up later on when finances improve, maybe reducing the term back down in the future. To see how this might work on our example, if that £225,000 mortgage was over 25 years on an interest rate of 6%, I know, but that's the new world we're in, I'm afraid. Let's say we extended the term out to 30 years, it would lower the monthly repayments from £1,450 to £1,349 a month. You're saving about £100 a month, but you have the mortgage for five years longer. And perhaps the most shocking statistic here, this would actually see you pay approximately £50,700 more in overall interest. Yikes. Reduce the mortgage term. A bit weird to say this, you might think, as this is the complete opposite of the previous point. But if current cash flow isn't your problem, then reducing your mortgage term will reduce the amount of interest you pay in the long run. And it can be by big numbers. So if your goal is to reduce the total cost over the whole period of your mortgage, this is worth considering. If we take our 225,000 25 year term mortgage, which costs us £1,450 a month, if we reduce the term to 20 years, shaving five years off, it will raise the monthly repayments by £162 to £1,612, but will save us about £48,000 in overall interest. No small sum. The only thing I would say on this tip, however, is you should compare reducing the term like this with just keeping the term the same and overpaying using your 10% overpayment allowance, as this is more flexible. You can start and stop overpayments to suit, whereas if you reduce the term, you're committed to these new higher payments. Worth thinking about. Switch to interest only. This might be my least favorite option, but it's an option nonetheless, so we can't discount it. Essentially, the idea here is lowering your monthly payments by switching from a capital repayment mortgage to an interest-only one. The challenge this option presents is that you need a plan on how you are going to actually eventually pay it off. For this reason, it might be best to use only as a short-term solution if cash flow now is tight, but you hope it will improve in the future. Again, let's have another look at our example. A £225,000 mortgage on a 250000 home, 90% loan to value. If you have a capital repayment mortgage over 25 years on that 6% interest rate, you're looking at monthly payments of £1,450. Switching this same deal to interest only sees the monthly payments fall to £1,125. A saving of 325 quid a month, which could be very useful as a temporary boost to your cash flow. Downsize. Could you move somewhere smaller with a smaller mortgage? I know this is not a likely option for, say, a young family or someone living somewhere already a little tight on space, but if you're approaching retirement or already retired and mortgage costs are a concern, this could be a consideration. Who knows, you could even end up mortgage free if the maths works out for you. Only problem is, it will mean you have to sort through that garage. Improve your credit score. A bad credit score means you'll be stuck looking at worse deals with higher interest rates, so it's worth checking it and seeing if there is anything you can do to improve it, so you've got the best chance of getting a half-decent deal when it comes to remortgaging time. Lots of credit report services now will give you hints and tips on improving your score. Sometimes it can be as simple as making sure you're registered on the electoral roll at your current address. This could be a quick win, and remortgaging or not, it's worth doing anyway. When remortgaging, use a mortgage advisor. When it comes to looking at new deals and remortgaging, don't just look at your current lender. It's no different to renewing your car insurance. You've got to shop around and make sure you're getting the best deal. To do this, talk to a mortgage advisor or broker. Make sure they can look at deals from across the whole of the market. What's more is they can help advise you on different types of deals, if appropriate. Fixed rates, discounted variables, etc, etc. In my opinion, well worth the small fee they will likely charge you for their time. And no, I'm not touting for business here, I don't do mortgages anymore. But I'm sure if you ask family and friends, someone will be able to recommend someone. Stay away from the standard variable rate. When your fixed rate deal comes to an end, you'll go on to what's known as your lender's standard variable rate, or SVR for short. 
This will see you paying more interest and it will change if base rate changes any more too. So for those reasons, it's to be avoided. Don't let lack of action see you accidentally find yourself paying this rate. Look at these current deals from HSBC. Fixed rates around 5.27%, but if you fall onto the SVR, you'll be paying closer to 7%. On our example of a mortgage of £225,000, that will see the payments go from 1,351 to 1,589 on a 25 year mortgage, an increase of £238 a month from just falling off your current deal and not taking action. Be proactive to avoid this. Make sure you know when your deal ends. Review your budget. If general cash flow is the issue and why you're trying to find ways of saving money on your monthly mortgage payment and tips one through nine aren't for you, I'd recommend you take a good run through your budget to see if there is anywhere else you can save money. Maybe there's a subscription or two that you don't really use and you could do without. It's far more important to keep up on your mortgage payments and keep a roof over your head than it is to drive a newly financed car or a fancy health club membership. So there's 10 ideas, 10 tips. Have I missed any? Let me know in the comments what your situation is. I, I know it's a pretty nervy time right now and these uh, interest rates are a nightmare, be giving lots of people sleepless nights. So any insights for people might be helpful. Let's talk in the comments. And one last thing, please head on over to thatfinanceshow.com now and consider grabbing yourself some goodies, which really helps support the channel, a t-shirt, a mug, or maybe a lovely set of coasters. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.